I am Nettie Sidan. And you're probably wondering why I'm near the first agricultural tower. Well, there's a good reason for that. It's because I want to gather cobblestone from this mass of stone nearby. Because I want to build a walkway leading to where that ocean monument is. You know that's one. The one where I made use of water breathing potion. I want a more convenient way of getting there, and also somewhere to respawn in case something goes wrong. Yes, I want to build a tower which is specifically for safety reasons. Because I've got a lot of enchanted stuff on and I'd rather not lose it. For all I know, those guardians, which make gathering prismarine more difficult, or indeed anything more difficult, even with diamond tools. For all I know, they could eat away at my health. Well, they could make it go quicker than an Argentinian steakhouse in India. It's just as dangerous to I I'd expect. Oh yes, I'll be gathering this dirt as well. That'll be the base of the arena. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about that. I have greatly expanded on the base of it. This is going to be huge. And I haven't even worked on the arena itself yet. Mm. Thinking bigger than I've ever done. I mean, it'll be bigger than the first agricultural tower. I mean, it'll probably be bigger than the mushroom tower. That's the second one with agriculture in it. Oh, yes. And as for this latest project I'm working on, which so far appears to be a long term one. It'll be more than 50 parts. I'll say that much. But it'll be in character. And some of you are probably wondering, why do I play a lot of dark mm. games? Why hasn't it driven me insane or depressed me? Well, there's a good reason for that. It's because my life is so grim dark. They don't make a dent if they make a dent at all regarding my mental state. Because
because remember, games are imaginary constructs. Reality sucks. It can be much worse than anything that comes from the minds of others. I mean, why do you think I like Dark Souls? So the void. There's so much that makes no sense in that. You'd expect me to think. Oh, I don't want to go on anymore. But not me. I went through it until the end. And Believe me, it was unlike anything mm. that I worked on previously. <laughs> Although antechamber was still the most strange. a more powerful machine as there are a few games which um, must be worth playing. Let's see Prey being one of them. Seeing as it's a Bioshock type experience. Doom perhaps Well, I've gone through the rest of it. And no, I'm not counting the BFG edition. And no, I'm not buying Doom 3 again. Just to get the separate story copies. Yeah, the main reason why that was a survival horror type experience with narrow corridors. Well, more or less. Was because apparently the hardware at the time couldn't handle the kind of experience that classic Doom provided. Not so in this case. In fact, if I do play that one, I'll probably do that more or less in character. Well, the overlords in the Overlord games were silent protagonists as well, but. That didn't stop me adding voice acting. In fact, I think it made the experience slightly better. Yeah, whether or not I do this in or out of character, that depends on my mood, really. Oh, yeah, there's also. The Spectrum Retreat. That looks interesting. Yeah, it's really time for me to head inside and use a bed. Well, unless you want me to attract some phantoms. Yeah. A lot of the time I seem to... 
gravitate towards indie titles with more cerebral contents. Although that doesn't stop me from doing something a bit less cerebral. That involves a lot of weapons and explosions. <laughs> Not the Michael Bay type of explosions. Ugh. If there's any religion that would consider pointless explosions to be heretical, please tell me. Because I'd like to inform someone from that religion to go deal with the heretics. Preferably by tying them to a stake and setting it alight. Sorry, that's a bit too medieval. Let's not do that. Hmm. Let's see. Oh yes, Dishonored 2's another one. That's something that requires a bit more thought. Considering that there's an option not to use lethal force. And there's an added bonus. Apparently, it has the voice of Garrett. Yeah, as in the genre definer for first person stealth games. Well, it's how it really picks up. And believe me, I've played through Thief and Thief 2. So I know what they're like. Oh yeah, and the first Dishonored. Yeah, the first is Sonored. That's basically a choice between the way of Batman, as in no lethal force, and being subtle about it, or the way of Deathstroke, which is quite a bit of collateral damage and being less than subtle. In other words, how you typically play a first-person shooter. Now, with first-person stealth games, I typically prefer to avoid detection. In fact, with Alien Isolation, which is first-person stealth and survival horror. Detection is suicidal. Considering what detection attracts. I mean, well, you wouldn't know if you didn't watch the movie. as that's basically how that game works. Well, the first movie applies, but the second one... Let's just say that... there were less subtle options. Not that it helped much. <laughs> uh, 
And yes, I did go back for more. Because some of the law was locked behind ways that I couldn't access. At least not until I had the correct tools. I mean, some people would think, nah, not worth it just to find out more about what happened. But I'm actually interested in the plot of the game. When there is a plot. Mm. While well, some would prefer non stop action. Mm. Yeah, basically, adrenaline junkies. don't want to be too active. <laughs> right. Rethink has been uploaded at this point. Yeah. It's as if the more mainstream or AAA game companies are steering clear of first-person puzzle. Well, they're lost, I suppose. Because it means it's a void that others who are a bit less how can I put it Snobbish when it comes to certain genres. It's all the void. I mean, some of these developers, AAA developers, believe that survival horror was dead. <laughs> Well, they'd say that because they're telling us that, and because they're not making any survival horror. <sighs> That's a myth dispelled by a number of indie developers, and of course Creative Assembly, makers of both the Total War series and Alien Isolation. I mean, how bad are some of these developers' excuses? Also, how disinterested in survival horror must these mainstream developers have to be for a developer of turn-based and real-time strategy hybrid games to actually work on that. I mean, not just work on that. Do a good job. And this is the same game that didn't really get a good review with one reviewer because it was too long. <sighs> yeah, blaming others for a shorter time span. <sighs> well, let them watch a Michael Bay movie. <laughs> As that's more their thing. Oh yes, and you know those known as snowflakes? Rather, to give them the full title, 
entitled Snowflakes. <sighs> the kind that overreacts as even the slightest amount of criticism. The kind that <clears throat> can't seem to argue for any <clears throat> good reason. They just argue for the sake of it. Criticize for the sake of it. <sighs> and if there's something that they don't agree with, they'll just slam you. Not bother to listen to your side of it, to get the facts straight, to make it anything other than a one-sided argument. The kind of people you can dish it out, but can't really take it. Yeah, think of them as conversational glass cannons. Much like Tenebrarum of Vinheim in Dark Souls 3. Except it was a more productive this case. a psychological term, which describes such individuals. The Napoleon Complex, which can be summed up to a small person being doesn't have to be And no, I'm not talking about Warwick Davis kind of small. I'm thinking somewhere in between that and average. the latter more than the former. Someone who feels small, but needs to overcompensate it. By having an inability to keep their big mouth shut. get away with it, not have to worry about consequences, as if they were above them. Well, the consequences aren't always immediate. if they're not dealt with. They can catch up with such individuals. It's also known as karma. As in karma's a... <sighs> figure out the best. Although, in some cases... Karma can be a right prick. Do you know why? Because it can punish those who are undeserving of 
punishment rather than those who did deserve it. Oh yes, and they're building the walkway roughly in the direction of where I built this fortunes. Hoping that I get to roughly the right direction of the ocean monument. Yeah, I'll probably be focusing on this walkway. At least, as long as it takes to get to that landmass near the ocean monuments. And I remember putting a bed down in a chest somewhere, which means I'll have plenty of, well, a bed spare to place nearby. I might also want to make another ender chest so that I can transfer materials between sites. In fact, I can transfer it anywhere that has an ender chest. Oh yes, and once placed, it can't be removed. At least not as easily as a regular chest. But the advantage is, its contents can be accessed anywhere. <sighs> Have any of you thought that <sighs> the universe is flipping the bird, as the expression goes. That's just being cruel to you, just for the sake of being cruel. <sighs> That's Tuesday for me as in standard procedure. <sighs> oh yeah, and the sad part about it is... It doesn't really affect me that much. The worst of the damage was done long ago. Does that disturb some of you? If yes, you have good reason. If no, you should be. You might want to ask... What happened to you to make you like this? Well, the answer is simple. You do not want to know. Yeah. There are some things that you're better off not knowing about me. Because there are very few that are immune to the... How can I put it? Negative aspects of spending time. <sighs> With most individuals, the more they know me, the less that they want to know me. It's mostly family that's If not immune, they're strongly resistant to the negative effects of my personality. 
personality. Just be near it. Although that might have something to do with limiting their exposure to me. And yet, yeah, I put the cobblestone in the wrong place. Multiple times. Thankfully, I had the death strider. At least that way, the movement isn't as inhibited. I know these supports are more for show than anything, but I wanted to keep them built in places. And no, I'm not going to make them smooth stone, because that requires fuel. stone is easier to come by than coal. Although I could have made charcoal, but... Nah. It didn't seem worth it to deforest the area, even though saplings were... They'd be plentiful. Oh, and before I end this episode of Minecraft Weekly World of Towers, Whenever you make an argument or criticize something, make sure you're doing it constructively. Otherwise, you're just doing well, you're not doing anyone any favors. As you give the impression that you have nothing better to do than cause trouble for others. Which for some might not be the intention. But others, such as psychopaths, and especially those who are narcissistic, They don't really care about anyone else's opinions other than theirs. Because they're the only one who should matter. They're the center of the universe. And yet, they're seemingly incapable of running their own lives. Right. That's it for this session. Until next time.